Number one, polymer clay scrapbooking embellishments. Roll out about an inch of polymer clay. Cut it in half, and then you want to just roll it out into this really long cylinder, just like you see here. And that one's about eight inches in length. Before you start doing anything else, make sure you have your oven tray and a piece of parchment that you will actually cut and create these wreaths on. And I know it's a little early in the season, but I thought, you know, let's get you started into thinking about what to create over the holidays. What I'm going to be doing is creating a wreath. The one thing with this technique is you want to make sure you cut at an angle, being mindful to make sure you do not cut right through the stem of this polymer clay. And then you just drag each leaf to the left and then to the right of the main body of that polymer clay stem. And then what I do is take one end and I just curl it around to meet one of the leaves. And then adjust it accordingly and then you can just kind of push down on one of the leaves to, um, to set it into place. Now, is this a wreath? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, in this example, I actually cut the leaves a bit too long. But if you wanted more leaves on the wreath, then all you have to do is make shorter cuts. And then just leaving it on its own, it looks beautiful as a vine itself as well that can be used in your crafting projects. So you don't necessarily have to turn this into a wreath. And here you can see I am doing the exact same thing, but I'm making the cuts a little bit shorter so that the leaves on the wreath are smaller. And then what you do is you pop it in the oven for 15 to 30 minutes at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. Once it's come out of the oven, I finish it off with glossy accents or Sculpey glaze to give it that really nice sheen. And then use it wherever you like in your crafting. Number two, using mixed media in your scrapbook journals. Here I'm going to be using a DIY journal that I created and I'm going to be placing some element of mixed media in this journal. I really love this journal because it allows you to add and subtract pages from the journal. So if you screw up while you're journaling or adding mixed media to it, you can always scrap that piece of your journal and redo that page. So if you're interested in this project, I'll put a link to that in the description box below. But for now, I just wanna show you how I use mixed media in my journals. Now, over the past couple of years, I have grown accustomed to using embossing glaze in my journaling. And the reason why I love embossing glaze is that you can actually add it after. So the first thing you have to do is grab your stamps and use embossing ink on it. Stamp the page with the embossing ink and then add your embossing glaze. And then using a heating tool, go ahead and set the embossing glaze in place. And I love this embossing glaze for two reasons. Number one, it just adds dimension to the page. Two, it has a little bit of shimmer on it and glossiness. And three, it's translucent or transparent, meaning that anything underneath shows through. So if you've been journaling all over your book and you're like, you know what, I wanna add something that makes this page pop, or you just wanna flex that creative muscle without it covering up the text, this is by far one of the best mixed mediums to use in your scrapbook journals. Number three, masking. 
Now, this is not new, but I'd like to introduce it to you or revisit it because I think it's an oldie that uh, needs to come back. Masking, if you're not familiar with it, is the use of materials to protect areas from change or to focus change on other areas. And all I did was I just took a piece of a paper, or in this case, a printout of the scrapbook journal that I was using, and I cut out the inside. And I want to add a stamp to the journaling area there without it going on to the outer portions of that frame. And so that's where cutting out and making a mask really helps to isolate that area. You can see where the stamp does not go outside of the framed border there. Number four, scrapbooking to connect. I love scrapbook journaling. It is a chance for me to just unwind, to reflect, and to really think about what I'm being called to do in the world. Now, one of the things I have found is that when I am reflecting and thinking and writing, there's always a person that comes to mind. And this is where scrapbooking to connect comes from. It's not just sending a text, it's actually being intentional about sitting down and writing a thoughtful card to a friend or to someone you know and being an encouragement and a light to that person. So what I love to do is, alongside of the DIY scrapbook journals I create, I love to create postcards or cards that match the scrapbook journals. Number five, creating texture with distress spray stains. Now, one of the things I wanted to do was create some tags for my Java journal. And because it has that coffee theme to it, I wanted something that uh, reflected that and looked like coffee. So I'm going to take the walnut stain and instead of spraying it directly onto the cardstock, I'm just going to spray it onto the craft mat here. Now, if you don't want a spray all over, sometimes it's better to actually just pour it out onto the craft mat. And here, instead of using Tim Holtz ink blenders, I'm just going to use foam blenders for this technique. And then all you have to do is just apply it to your cardstock. And I love how you can layer these stains one on top of the other. And because it's a stain and this is just regular cardstock, uh, it's not treated, by soaking the page, you can actually create texture in the page. The, the fibers of the actual cardstock start coming apart and it gives you that coffee look. And actually, you know, if you look even closer, it gives you that almost like a cowhide kind of appearance. So. If you feel like you need some kind of outdoorsy texture, this one is, this one's actually pretty good. Just be ready because when you flip the tag over, it's gonna be quite saturated. And so this color will actually bleed a little bit through. So make two tags and butt them up against each other and it'll look amazing. Now in keeping with this whole idea of, of distress stains, I love distress staining calico crafting fabric. I actually got this from Taperology and their fabrics pair really well with their rub-on stickers. But here before I treat it, I'm going to actually just fray the edges because I like that worn look. And you know what, I like this overlapping look so I'm just gonna keep it that length. So I'm just using an old shoe box and I'm going to spray antique linen on there. and then you just let it dry. But if you want a little bit more dimension, I'm going to take the walnut stain and just add a few drops of the walnut stain just to give it a little bit more dimension. And you'll probably have to let it dry for a few hours before you can actually use it. What I love about this fabric is that you can stamp on it. And what I love to do is stamp a sentiment using VersaFine. And then add one of these rub-on stickers just to add a little bit more color and interest to the tag. So far, if you are enjoying this content, could you send me a like uh, so it can spread to the rest of our crafting community? I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. And if you want more tips and tricks, make sure you hit that subscribe button too.
Number eight, mixing distress glaze and texture paste. Is that even possible? Well, in this case, I'm gonna show you a little trick that uh, you might have seen or may not have seen, but this one's using distress glaze on top of texture paste. Here I took uh, some VersaFine ink and I'm stamping this image onto just regular cardstock. And I want to work on this right away, so I'm just going to dry it with my heating tool here. Now using the concept of corner embellishing, I'm just going to place a little bit of translucent texture paste on this stencil. And if you're not familiar with corner embellishing, all that is is just placing your embellishments on the corners of your pages so that it draws the eye inward to whatever focal point you want to accentuate. Now, without waiting too long, I place some distress glaze onto the actual texture paste. Now you can do one of two things here. You can wait for the paste to dry and then heat the embossing glaze on top, or you can immediately dry the, the mixture from the bottom. And you can see what it does here. It actually causes a bubbling effect. And if you like that bubbling effect for more dimension to your tags, then go ahead and do that. But if you don't, then you can just wait for the texture paste to dry and then heat emboss the embossing glaze right after that. I really hope you enjoyed these scrapbooking tips and tricks. If you're interested in more tips on how to jazz up those scrapbook journals, then you'll probably want to watch this video here or this video here. I really hope to see you in my other videos. Take care and we'll see you there. Bye.